It's one of the mightiest and most intimidating creatures that lived in Middle Earth during the War of the Ring. The great and terrifying Oliphants. Hello friends and foes of Middle Earth and welcome back. Today we'll explore the lore behind the fascinating elephant-like creatures known as Oliphants. The Oliphants were massive, often ferocious beasts with huge legs like trees, thick grey hide and they were larger than a house, as Sam recounts in his poem called Oliphant. Their long snouts that were one of the most recognizable features, so much so that the Sindarin word for elephant, Anabon, actually means long snout. These mighty creatures lived in Harad, but it's uncertain where in Harad exactly. Some suggest near Harad. If so, I'd find it likely they would live somewhat near the river Hanin going through the region. But I do find it more likely that they would live somewhere in Faharad, where there would be access to plenty of food and drinking water. After all, the Oliphants were creatures of legend to the Hobbits, so it wasn't widely known among Hobbits at least, if they even existed. To the Haratrim, an Oliphant was called a Mumak, or Mumakil in plural form, and these names were also used in Gondor. Though the creatures were not naturally evil, they were somehow tamed by the Haratrim and used in warfare under the service of Sauron. We don't know how the Sauthrons tamed the wild beasts, but I imagine it's a hard task, and it would take years of training and practice before you could control the beast properly. The result of all this was possibly one of the most brutally effective beasts of war that Middle-earth ever saw. The Haradrim strapped towers on their backs and rode them into battle. In the films, we see that the Haradrim have added additional weaponry to the tusks to make them even more deadly. But we don't have any evidence in the books that they actually did this, though I would find it plausible. The Mumak itself, enraged and gouted by its cruel Haradrim masters, would charge through the enemy, trampling archer, swordsman, and a horse beneath its massive feet. It was almost impossible to kill a mumak. It had rough leathery hide, which made arrows relatively harmless to it. Horses had a natural fear of the mumakil, so even the most skilled horsemen could not get close enough to strike at its great trunk-like legs. The only known way to defeat an elephant was to shoot it in the eyes, which typically meant standing in front of it as it charged the archer, and thus a very difficult task to perform. Not only would you need to get close enough to the beast, but you'll also need a lot of courage to face it in the first place. We know of at least two archers that did have the courage to face it during the Battle of Peleno Fields, the sons of Lord Duin here, Derofin and Duilin. They lit their bowmen close to shoot at the eyes of the monsters, but were trampled along with many of the men. We meet the Mumakil for the first time in Ithilien in the Two Towers. On March 7th, Faramir led the rangers of Ithilien on an ambush against the contingent of Arhatrim marching north. This battle was witnessed by Frodo and Sam, and they saw an elephant in full charge. The maddened animal had smashed its war tower in its rush through the woods. Unguided, it trampled soldiers on both sides. Where, where, cried Damrod to his companion. May the Valar turn him aside. Mumak, Mumak. After this, the beast disappeared into the unknown. And we first encountered them again during the siege of Gondor in The Return of the King. On March 14th, Oliphants were used to drag war towers and engines to be used against the walls of Minas Tirith. The Oliphants themselves couldn't harm the black outer walls of Minas Tirith, as the walls were made of unbreakable stone, the same material used for the Tower of Orthanc. The following day, during the Battle of Pelennor of Fields, Oliphants were used as rallying points for the Harathrim after the Rohirrim had charged into the fray. While the Mumakil were effective beasts of war, they were also likely to panic during battle and run amok and kill men on both sides. We don't know exactly what would cause this, but if we take a look at war elephants in our own history, we hear similar stories and how the Romans would even come up with tactics that would make them less effective in battle. One way would be to aim for the eyes and another to use fire to scare them. Perhaps the Gondorians used similar tactics, given the similarities between the Gondorians and the Romans. One of the iconic moments in the films is the Rohirrim charging towards the incoming Mumakil, and one might think it's the first time the Rohirrim see the elephants but it is possible that the Rohirrim had fought the Oliphants before the Battle of Pelennor of Fields, as they had helped Gondor in a war against the Haradrim in 2885 that ended with a great battle known as the Battle of the Crossing of Poros. The Oliphants are not mentioned, only that the Haradrim had an army of great strength. I like to imagine that would include at least one Oliphant, if not several. But let me know what you think below. Eventually the great beasts were defeated as the forces of the West won the battle but not before they had slain many men and horses. According to the poem, 
they wouldn't actually lie down when they died. But maybe that's just a poem. And just to make it clear for everyone, they weren't slain by the army of the dead, as seen in the film. That part didn't happen in the books. After the defeat of Sauron, when Frodo and Sam had been rescued and brought to the field of Cormallon, Sam wandered in the glades near Hennethanun, hoping to see the Oliphants he had seen before, but to no avail. It wasn't there anymore. If it wasn't killed, it likely wandered around, trying to find home south, but we can't tell for certain. In a draft version of what would later become Appendix F, it's mentioned that the name Mumak of the Great Elephant of Harad is a name from the speech of men of the East and allies of Sauron. So this would mean that the Oliphants might also have lived in the East, though we don't have any more evidence to support that. So it might have been an idea Tolkien abandoned, but it is interesting to think about. Maybe they were different from the Mumakil we know from Harad, just like there are different breeds of elephants today. And while the elephant remind us of elephants, it's important to remember that the Mumak of Harad was indeed a beast of vast bulk, and the like of him does not walk now in Middle Earth. His kin that still live in latter days are but memories of his girth and majesty. If you want to support the channel, you can either become a member or join through Patreon.